Thank you so very much. Mr. Chairman and Director General of Commonwealth Business Council, the Prime Minister's Trading Boy, Lord Jonathan Mailan, fellow ministers, industry experts, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Let me take this opportunity to commend the Commonwealth Business Council for the foresight in organizing this mining conference with an important focus on transparency in the extractive industries uh, resources sector. Some discussions seem to focus on transparency more as an end, but I hope the critical role of transparency as a means to achieving sustainable development as an end will be demonstrated by my presentation. Distinguished participants, the investment such lies have come on Africa because of the following factors. Enormous natural resource potential, improvement in governance, and improving infrastructure. Additionally, the new era of joint venture between international juniors and local exploration companies that is taking, uh, that, that is taking place across notable African countries on the African continent has provided more opportunities for mining investment. However, Africa must deal with a number of challenges in order to succeed in converting the natural resources beneath the ground into sustainable financial, social, and human assets. Distinguished participants, in general, some of the challenges facing mineral producing nations in Africa include ensuring a good balance between the incentives to attract investors and benefits that accrue to the country. Integration of the sector with the rest of the economy by way of increasing local content in the extractive sector and thirdly, value addition to the raw minerals produced while maintaining technical and cost efficiency. Also, while expecting adequate revenue through reasonable commodity prices, most exporting countries are price takers. There is therefore the challenge of how to accommodate price fluctuations and furthermore, maximize the portion of revenue retained in the country to support development efforts. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me give a brief on Ghana's mining sector and also offer some insights on how Ghana has been attempting to deal with these challenges. Ghana abounds in several minerals. However, those currently mined on a large scale, on a large scale are gold, bauxite, and manganese. There are also major occurrences of industrial minerals such as limestone and aggregate minerals. Over the past decade or so, the mining sector has consistently been the highest gross foreign exchange earner. Currently, the sector contributes 28% of government revenue as captured by the Domestic Tax Authority or Division of the Ghana Tax Authority. The sector employs 28,000 people in the large scale and mine support services industry whilst over one million people are engaged in small-scale mining. In 2012, export revenues from the mineral sector amounted to over 5.6 million US dollars. Total foreign direct investment into the minerals and mining sector from 1983 to 2012 amounted to over 12.5 billion US dollars. Distinguished participants, let me now highlight some aspects of our management of policy space to address the key challenges. First challenge being ensuring a good balance between the incentives to attract investors and benefits that accrue to the country. Mining is necessarily multifaceted and capital intensive. 
does the activity lends itself to participation by a broad range of participants and investors, including public and private sector players, local entities, as well as multi foreign multinationals. The multinationals nationals who are major stakeholders often raise scarce exploration capital from stock exchanges abroad to invest in mineral endowed nations. The creation of favorable environments to attract investment is necessary to call forth such investments. However, to be worth it, the environment must ensure a win-win situation for both the investors and government alike. Government is therefore striving to achieve a fiscal and regulatory regime based on the following principles. Fair participation by the states, stability over time, transparency and level playing field for all companies, clarity of provisions and administration, active stakeholder involvement, and international competitiveness. Then also, to avoid the phenomenon of race to the bottom, Ghana has been an active participant in the development of regional and global initiatives aimed at creating a reasonable uniform mi mineral policy regime for mineral producing countries, especially in Africa. Specific references made to the following, the African mining vision and its resulting action plan. We seek to use African mineral resources sector to reduce the continent's poverty and accelerate its social and economic development. It seeks to set Africa on an industrialization path based on its natural capital and enable the continent to take its place in the global economy. The ECOWAS Mineral Development Policy and the ECOWAS Directive on the Harmonization of Guiding Principles and Policies in the Mining Sector. One of the key objectives of this ECOWAS initiative is to provide a mining environment that is responsible, responsive to sustainable development and balances the need to provide the appropriate incentives to attract investors with the protection of the revenue base and resources of member states. And lastly, the mining policy framework of Intergovernmental Forum on Mining metals and sustainable development. The thrust of this framework is to improve and promote the contribution of mining, minerals and metals sector to sustainable development and poverty reduction. Additionally, to ensure efficient implementation of the mining vision, as African mining vision, and other regional agreements, government is main mainstreaming provisions of African national mining vision into sector policies, programs, and projects. Government has also signed on to a number of international initiatives, notably the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative and the Kimberley Process Certification Scheme to improve transparency in the management of the mineral resources. Mr. Chairman, Whilst transparency is critical in the management of our depletable resources, it is equally important to ensure that application of transparency instruments lead to trust building among all stakeholders involved, leading to sustainable development rather than being seen as just a compliance measure. Distinguished participants. While significant investment made in the mining sector led to corollary benefits of expansion of the economy, the importance of creating the requisite linkages with other related sectors of the economy to ensure optimization of the benefits cannot be overemphasized. This leads me on to the need to integrate the mining sector with the rest of the economy. It is noted that beyond the direct physical receipts, 
the sector has greater capacity to catalyze broad-based national development when it is integrated into the economy. This could be achieved by a combination of A, additional physical accruals and employment generated by extra activities, and B, by the sector providing offtake and or inputs for other sectors, as well as C, significant research and development and transfer, technology transfer opportunities. While still nascent, these developments, along with mining, has contributed to, to the state of development of the following sectors in the economy. And these sectors are the banking and finance services, or financial services, transport and logistics, communication, hospitality and, and catering, consultant, that is geological, environmental, and engineering services, manufacturing and fabrication. The gist is simply that even though integration of the economy, of the mining sector with the rest of the economy is still nascent, these, the, the sector has largely contributed to the flowing, I mean, the sectors that I've mentioned, the banking and transport, communication, hospitality, consultancy, and manufacturing sectors. Distinguished participants, in order to deepen integration of the sector with the rest of the economy, government has passed local content regulations to guide implementation of local content provisions in the mining sector. Government is also working with the Ghana Chamber of Mines to improve local content by identifying and disseminating information on high volume mining industry supply chain consumables in order to assist active small and medium scale enterprises to participate as a way of improving local content in the mining sector. Value addition to minerals produced. Ghana is already producing over 4.3 million ounces of gold per, per annum. In spite of this level of production, there are only small refineries, small scale refineries, which refine gold produced largely by the small scale mining sector of, in the country. Bullion from large scale production continues to be exported for final refinery outside the country. Efforts are being made to attract investment to establish a major gold refinery facility in Ghana with the potential to serve other gold producing countries within the sub-region. Besides gold, Ghana produces significant volumes of bauxite and manganese. Currently, these two products are exported without any value addition. It is therefore the policy of the government of Ghana going forward that the exploitation of the rest of the bauxite and manganese deposits will be linked to value addition. In fact, for bauxite, it is expected that the exploitation of the rest of the major deposits will be linked to the establishment of a refinery to convert the raw bauxite resource into alumina for smelting locally or abroad. Also, value can be added to salt for use in the chloroacaly industry. For example, potential exists for its utilization to produce caustic soda, which is a raw material for the soap and detergent industry and the bauxite alumina production. The chlorine co-product can also be used as water treatment chemical and also serve as raw materials for the production of various health and sanitation chemicals. Fourthly, commodity, commodity price volatility and the need to maximize the portion of revenues retained in the state to support development efforts. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the recent boom in mineral commodity prices, especially that of gold, and its significant reversal demonstrates yet again 
the volatility and unpredictability of mineral revenues. Gold accounts for greater than 80% of mining revenues and over 40% of total merchandise export earnings for Ghana. Indeed, natural resource revenue volatility, especially when it is a major part of the mix, is a leading cause for resource-dependent uh, countries. Indeed, a leading concern. Ghana, like most commodity producing countries, uses conservative estimates of commodity prices when forecasting revenues in budgeting. This is viewed as a prudent way to reduce the risk of large scale deficit adjustment in the event of unanticipated decline in revenues as is being experienced currently due to the drastic fall in gold price. This policy is an attempt to reduce the impact of volatility in mineral prices on government expenditures. It also li limits transmission of external shocks into the domestic economy. The downward side, or the downside, however, is that this is unlikely to be sustainable because of the random movement of prices. In the long term, the most reliable solution is to diversify revenue dependence from a single or few mineral resources. Diversifying the economy from, away from the mineral sector generally limits volatility and ensures a supply of government revenues that is not tied to the performance of one industry. In Ghana, the economy is quite diversified with the major export, commodity exports being minerals, cocoa and its products, forestry, and logging among others. The services sector is also growing. Government is driving for further diversification of the mineral resources base, as well as away from mining and other extractives. Ladies and gentlemen, another tool currently being employed in the oil subsector but yet to be deployed in the hard rock arena is the use of fiscal stabilization funds to manage the challenge of price volatility of mineral commodities. However, to allocate benchmark portions of mineral royalties for local community infrastructure development, government has taken the Mineral Development Fund bill through elaborate stakeholder consultations and is being prepared for submission to cabinet. When passed, it will streamline the return of portions of mineral royalties back to the communities in which mining takes place to foster development in a structured and transparent way. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, in concluding, it is noted that for Africa's significant mineral resources to contribute to sustainable development, countries which have lagged behind need to leapfrog by learning from history to avoid the mistakes made by countries which successfully developed through mining. We do not have to squander our opportunities. Rather, we need to strategize to surmount the challenges we face in ensuring that we maximize benefits from our resources under win-win agreements. Thank you so very much.